Good morning, church family. First, I want to say welcome to the continuation of our side-by-side -side series that we started. To be honest with you, I'm not sure exactly when we started. We've had many interruptions, uh, but again, so many of you have uh, come back again and again and have even reached out to me in between or during uh, and have shared just how much of a blessing that these biblical principles that we have been studying together have been to you. So I thank you for that. I'm just uh, by way of doing this online, I am going to make the videos in, in shorter uh, sections. Uh, I know it is difficult to watch something online for uh, 40 minutes or more. So I'm going to try and aim for around uh, 15 minutes per video. But I thank you for tuning in. I would I greatly encourage you, if you have any questions, uh, please email the church or myself personally. Many of you have my contact information. Feel free to do so. I enjoy the conversations and the fellowship that I have with you around God's word. So please do that. So let's get into our study. I want to do a little bit of a review because it has been a while and we have been apart uh, numerous times. So it is difficult to kind of remember, okay, where exactly were we? And in the side by series, we're in the second half of the book, which is really about life touching life, using your life to impact others for Christ. And so these are some of the principles that we have gone over thus far. And I just want to kind of quickly review them. We've talked a lot about moving towards people and greeting them. This is something that is not naturally easy for us to do, um, but it's something that, again, we went over in detail and the importance of it, that we uh, go and introduce ourselves, especially to new people in the church, and even sometimes people that we don't uh, have an opportunity to talk with often. And, and this is hopefully going to lead to short, meaningful conversations, which is going to be very helpful for you to get to know the person and help you to understand what is important to them. And also, when, when you start developing that relationship, you're going to know how to pray for them more specifically. That is very, very helpful. One of the things we also talk about is sometimes you get to know people. Sometimes we obviously um, uh, get to know one another's faults and maybe uh, character issues that we have. And in our uh, fallen nature, sometimes we just focus on those issues and just want to fix those issues. But really spend a, a week um, talking about the importance of enjoying one another and enjoying fellowship with one another and focusing on the good. Yes, we want to help people uh, through certain issues. Absolutely, we do. Um, but again, in enjoying one another in Christ. And, and this is going to lead, as you, again, spend time with people and you enjoy the fellowship and time, it's going to leave, lead to you having longer conversations and hopefully in deeper friendships. I hope that you have friendships in this church. And I hope that there'll be many more to come as well. That are more than just see you once a week, but you're in contact with them throughout the week that when it's allowable, you have them over to your, your home and have meals together or pray together, do Bible studies together. It's amazing to me. I have um, a couple in mind that have moved all over different parts of Canada, but they have friends at a particular church that they went to that they still have to this day, even though they have moved from province to province and city to city, um, they still have those same friends because there was a deep bond that was created. And, and that is what we want to have in the church setting is deep friendships. And really, in this particular lesson, this is where we're moving is we really want to be friends that are not only friends in the good times, but friends in the bad times as well, that we're there in time of need for those uh, that we love and care about, and that we've developed, again, friendships with, and that we would reach out in compassion. And so, we're really talking about being compassionate in trouble. And I want to look at the example of Jesus. And so if you have your Bibles, I'll invite you to turn to these passages. But Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, it's really kind of a summary statement of his ministry. He's kind of in and around Capernaum and going from different uh, cities and places in that general area. And in the summary statement of kind of his ministry here, in verse 36 of chapter 9, it says, But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. Because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. There were lots of people that were following Jesus around, even sometimes in the neglect of their daily necessities, food and water and different things. And they didn't have anybody to lead them spiritually either. And um, there's lots we could say about this passage. But I, what I want to focus on is that you see that Jesus was moved with compassion, moved with compassion. And um, in Matthew 14, verse 14 as well, um, you see that, I'm going to read the verse and make a couple comments about it. It says, and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and moved with compassion toward them and healed their sick. This is when Jesus feeds the 5,000, if you read the rest of the passage. 
And again, he's just moved with compassion, taking care of people, helping them in their time of need. And it's just a wonderful example. And everywhere he went, he was doing this. In fact, if you just turn a page over, Matthew 15, 32, this is when he feeds the 4,000. It says, then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and having nothing to, te nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. And Jesus is is very concerned about people. He has compassion on the multitudes. And, and this is an earmark of his ministry. In fact, I'm going to give you another example. Matthew chapter 20, verse 34, says this. This is when Jesus was, um, there was two blind men that he encounters. And uh, they plead with him uh, that Jesus would heal them in their, in their difficulty and in their, in their blindness. And verse 34 says, so Jesus had compassion on them. And touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. When you study the Gospels, again, I've just taken just four quick passages from the book of Matthew. We could spend a lot more time unpacking these verses and going over those truths. But one thing is very, very evident. Jesus deeply loved people. I've kind of developed in, in my study a little bit of a definition of compassion. And so I'll, I kind of wrote it down as studying kind of put different definitions together, mash them together, and, and some of my own ideas as well. I wanted to read it to you because this is what you see in the ministry of Jesus Christ. And so compassion defined is to be affected deeply in a loving way in our inner being that stirs us to care for, love, and take care of, and provide for, and sympathize with those with whom we deeply care about and we perceive our need of compassion. And this is, this is what you see in Jesus' ministry. And we are to follow his example of having compassion. In fact, um, the Bible commands us as believers uh, to do this, to be compassionate and to help one another in different times of difficulty. In Galatians 6.2, it says, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. To bear here means to endure something unpleasant and difficult, whether it's on your own behalf or on behalf of somebody else. This word can be used uh, again in either way. And we are, again, in this context, to bear, to help people to endure and, and maybe even endure ourselves, help somebody and go through the difficulty with them, something that is unpleasant or difficult. And the word burden here is actually a very unique Greek word. It's not just the idea of some, some weight that we have to carry around. It's the idea of a crushing weight. Like you're hiking and a boulder falls on you and you can't get it off and you need help to get that boulder off of you. That is the kind of Greek word that's used here. It's this crushing weight you can't deal with yourself. And we are, as Christians, to help others when they have these times of crushing weight that comes upon them. And he says, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Earlier in Galatians chapter five, verse 14, he kind of delineates what he, what he means by this. And this is that we are to love one another um, deeply and, and such an important and, and precious passage there. And Jesus gave these commands that we are to love God and we are to love our neighbor as ourselves. And this is, this is part of the law of Christ, is that we would love one another and be there for one another and help one another in times of difficulty, in times of difficulty. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, what does this actually look like? How do I actually do this? And that's a, that's a great question. Well, I've kind of tried to put it in, a, in an acronym, an ABC. First, achieve contact. It is very, very important when, when you hear that somebody is going through a difficulty to try and be there in person. I know this is even more difficult with the current restrictions and climate that we live in right now. And you may have to be a little bit more creative using technology or the mail or email, what have you. Um, but if you can be there in person, it is very, very important. There have been times in my life that I've gone through great difficulty, great burdens, you know, I don't always remember what the individuals said to me at the time. 
but I remember that they were there. They were there. They came alongside in those times of difficulty. That is what I remember. And I greatly appreciate their, their presence with me through those difficulties. This is the A. This is the first one. And you see this in Jesus' ministry. He is there. He, inter he interacts with people. Sometimes uh, he's in a certain place and someone will come to him and say, you know, I have so-and-so that's over here in, in a neighboring village that needs to be healed. Will you come with me? And Jesus would go. He would go and be there. The second thing is to boil down the problem to its essentials. So when you go there, you may not necessarily know what exactly happened or transpired. And this is where we need to be very careful to be quick to listen and slow to speak. Do a lot of listening when you go and make contact with somebody in difficulty. Sometimes we worry about what to say, but the most important thing to do is be the best listener you've ever been and to listen. Find out what's going on. And once when you feel like you have a good understanding, then you're in a place where you can start to minister comfort when appropriate. And comfort is going to have to come from the scriptures. Again, you're just being there, your presence is going to be comforting. But God's word is filled, is filled with truth that encourages the soul. And you want to be able to wield God's word in those scenarios to bring hope to the struggling, hope to those that uh, are going through great difficulty. And so this is the challenge. Let us take the challenge to love each other compassionately, to love like Christ loved others. He was compassionate in his ministry and he's compassionate today. And he loves and he reaches out and he helps those in difficulty. May the Lord give us grace and strength and by his spirit, allow us to walk in his footsteps and that we may learn to be compassionate. I thank you for your time. And again, I will continue our studies and I'll be making more videos as we go. And I would certainly love to hear from you in person or email at church, what have you. Uh, and I hope this was an encouragement to you. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.